Uh, well, this is actually my YouTube video. I highly recommend our YouTube channel, DPS TV. I put lots of good stuff up there. But uh, this, the reason I have this one is this pyramid shot at the end. And um, so this will cover, uh, this is just my nice picture of some of the D-wire sensors. They're always making some new ones, so I can't ever guarantee that my list is 100% comprehensive. But if you got something that you want to see as one of these sensors, you just tell me. We actually, we, we're starting to master training new engineers. We've got a, a little boot camp we put them through. So I'm suddenly seeing we have more engineers available to add, add a new sensor type if we need. But from the bottom left here, there's a propane sensor. Uh, this is designed to just intercept from one of those Rochester type uh, Hall effect sensors. And it just picks it up right here and digitizes it and then sends it out uh, across a D-wire back to the, the main We used the, uh, we just replaced the, the gauge with the other magnetic gauge and wire it straight into that. That's right, yeah. It's essentially just an analog input on a digital D-wire node, yeah. Okay. All right, and then uh, vibration. This is a self-contained one. And this one, uh, For this earthquake. one is just gonna yeah, conceivably, actually, I've got some guys who just slap it on a generator. It's kind of an acid test. It's like, is it operating? Or for um, sort of if you have people that kind of try to break into things, maybe you have like a panel on the side of a building or something that's locked and you put it on there. Once they start kind of trying to get into it, you get the signal. You that put that on all of our cabinets and we'd know when somebody shot one of them. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't know how often I hear that. It's amazing. Uh, Alaska <laughs> Railroad tells me that. They, they got Kevlar curtains inside the building. <laughs> yeah. I guess hunters get bored, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we were talking about the same kind of thing, maybe some kind of a sound, like a, they have those glass break sensors and you know, some kind of a big shock wave thing. So, yeah, that's a fun one, the reality we live in. Uh, the wind speed here, you have an external anemometer to that just, so it's, again, it's like an analog input. We just make specialized modules that make it a little bit simpler. Uh, temp and humidity is pretty standard. Uh, let's see, There's a this is the temp airflow we were talking about on the left in the middle. Okay. So you can see that little tongue thing sticking out, and that is just a piece of plastic. It gets vibrated. It goes to a little piezoelectric you know, cell, and it generates an electrical current. That's why if it's vibrating heavily, you calibrate it and say, okay, this is 100%. If it's only generating half the electricity, it's vibrating about half as much. So okay. uh, that's the one you put over the vent. But as you say, you got to qualify it. You can't just, if you have lead lag, you've got to give it some kind of logic to not throw an alarm when it doesn't need it. Yeah. Uh, AC fail. This one is just sensing the presence of power. I think is that. I see a five volt. Let's see. I'm going to hold it up. Let's, let's actually get me holding it. Is that it? No, that's vibration. Let's see. We got a little go wind, wind speed, temp humidity. Okay, second row. Temp airflow. Barely read that. And then the next one must be. Oh come on, Andrew. From the past. Ah. You know, the shell game. All right, we'll go back. Yeah, but the idea behind that one is just simple AC fail, uh, power out alert. Uh, yeah, we generally watt. pick those off of our, uh, pick those AC fails uh, on some of the newer, uh, newer deal, uh, newer rectifiers, we can pick that off of the rectifiers. And most of our sites, we actually installed a relay in the transfer cabinet Mm -hmm. that triggered when the AC, the commercial AC went out, then that relay would release or, and that, that's how we did, that's how we did those. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like you've already got that covered. The, on the right in the middle here, there's a three alarm module. This one is really just three discrete points on a D-wire node. So it can be good if you run out or also too, if you just want to have like a hundred feet away without having to run a bunch of wire you just run the one d wire uh, you can have those three discrete points and then okay. looks like i was just filling out my pyramid i got three analog modules across the top i think they might be different ranges so when we have the analogs that are built onto that guardian they're negative 90 to positive 90 volts when we build these other ones we wanted to have some different granularity choices so i know that there's a, a zero to 60 i think there's a zero to 12 might also be a zero to five so you want it to be Big enough to cover the range you need, but but not overly large. And then the last one, we, we somebody specially requested this. This was a, a little blinking red LED that, while the temp sensors can have like an LED, like you see on the, the left one here, 
uh, on the top, there's this big giant LED that you could put into a panel of some kind. So we've, we've gotten creative. You can see it's just the same board, but instead of having the LED on the surface of the metal, we just extend it out on, on a big pro bleed thing. Now, it's my understanding that if, when we do these D-wire, if I understood correctly, we go from the D-wire output of the net guardian and to, say, the temperature. And then we come out of the temperature and it connects to the propane tank. And then you would come out of the propane and go to the next one. But every time that you add one, it decreases the distance that you can go total. Yeah, that is correct. We are using up some amount of the, the juice every time we add one in. So the spec that we usually talk about is if you have one, you can go something like 600 feet. That's like the maximum that you would just carry across that one wire. By the time you get up to 16, your total aggregate length of the string is down to about 100 feet. So commonly when we have a couple, you know, maybe four or five, something like that, uh, you might have several hundred feet that you have to work with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you just daisy chain them off of each other. Yeah. So like if we if we were if we get when we get these, we'll go from the net guardian to the uh, to the uh, temperature, and then we'll go from the temperature over to the fuel gauge, and then if we need any past that, you know, I don't see us using them for a whole lot else. I don't. Do you have one for smoke alarm? Uh, yeah, because I don't our, think our, our, I don't our, our safety yet, guy may want may want to do a smoke alarm. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I know that we do have a third party one that we've done that's just like a smoke detector with a relay closure. But the idea mm -hmm. that we could do it in a D wire, we might have to make the housing a little bigger. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, Jared, you don't happen to know what those little photoelectric detector modules are? How big they are? Do you? Mm -mm. I don't think but it's that big. If they just come out with analog outputs from the smoke detector, is it not like that? No, no usually it's a discrete point. It's just a set yeah. point. You know, you hit a certain level, and there's there's no concept of a excuse me, you might have a fire. It's it's right, all but you can get. But my point is, is you can just connect that to a D wire sensor. Oh, okay, I see. So, in the same way that the temperature. That D wire champ, that D wire output of the nut guardian, it actually powers all of the sensors so we don't have to have all of the you know and i don't know uh my my boss he's also our safety guy i don't know whether he whether he'd want smoke detectors i mean i've been here 38 years and we ain't put one in yet so. <laughs> <start now>. yeah <laughs> yeah I was talking to a guy the other day who was trying to get out ahead of hydrogen detection he says i don't know if it's going to be a safety requirement but we got batteries everywhere and I, he's talking about wanting to just get it out of the way yeah, it's still yeah, it's just that is just a a standard Ethernet cable that connects these. It's actually even simpler than that. It's like an RJ12 or RJ11. It's just like old telco. It's six conductors. We don't use all of them, but the connector is, is smaller than Ethernet, but it's, it's an RJ. Okay, so we could just use RJ11 and we're we're fine. Yeah, we standard telco cable. You crimp them yourself. You know, we sell them, but the idea is you can make as whatever you need. The well, has gone. Right. The connector is six, but we, they're only using the they're only using the four centers. Oh, they're okay. not using the two outers. Oh, okay. Yeah. And as you can see, like on this one here, the the temp defender was the the progenitor of the D wire function, but then it was such a popular thing that it's made its way to all remotes. But the temp defender still has four of them. So you can have four legs. And regarding length, if you subdivide them into different legs, each one has its own power source. So you can end up pushing one 500 feet one way and, and have another three that go 300 feet some other way. So I estimate at some point we'll probably get to a concept of uh, similar to like a USB hub that's powered. There might be a way to have a little box that has a that you wire into power once that gives you a bit of a boost and gives you additional ports. So if you ever are struggling with having too many sensors and not enough power to cover the distance, do tell us. I don't, because... I, I don't think I don't think we're going to run into that because, like I say right now, you know, the only ones that I know that we will probably be using will be the temperature and the uh, fuel gauge. AC belt. Sure. We've already got those. We've already got those taken care of. Okay. Well, the last thing that I, 
I forgot about this video. This one's pretty good. The last thing I wanted to toggle over to, uh, I had written an article at one point about three of some of the newer D-Wire sensors, and I sort of surprised myself. I'm going to have to check out and see what um, if we sold this one before or if we just developed it, but uh, floor water sensor, which it may well be like the propane and the wind speed where it's just kind of a, a an input for the floor water sensor. I know we commonly sell the water bug model, but I, I would... I could look into that one, but I just, it was another one that wasn't in the video that I wanted to bring up.